Welcome to another um, episode of the Performance Kitchen. Today we are joined by Amy Wilson Hardy, England Sevens player. <laughs> Hi Amy, hey. um, nice to see you. you um, can you give us an idea about what we're going to be cooking today? Yeah, so today we're going to do some smoky prawn tacos. Um, I love entertaining food and like yeah, making food for people, so it's a really quick, easy dish that I like to make for my friends. Lovely, and so the ingredients that we've got here, so obviously we're using prawns, but I assume that you could probably use different ingredients as well. Yeah, I mean, you can whack pretty much anything in a taco, and um, this is one of my favourite recipes, but um, equally, like, really nice with pulled pork and stuff like that too. Great, so we've got prawns, what are these here? So, okay, pronunci pronunciation debate, chipotle, ch chipotle paste, <laughs> um, bit of smoked paprika, some avocado, some shallots, sour cream, honey, lime and some red cabbage. And we've got some salt and pepper for some seasoning. And so, what's the first steps with this? So, as I said, really easy. Um, do you want to cry with the shallots? Or yes, do I can do the shallots, I'll take those on. We only need one. Um, we can and do, you need them finely we chopped? Do a couple. Yeah, okay. so just small slices. You can do them raw, but I quite like to fry them up a bit um, just to take some of the harsh onion yeah. flavour out. And so when would you, so you talked about entertaining and cooking for people, when would this be kind of like a dish for you? When would you eat it? Would it just be a general every day or is it pre-game? Yeah, or? Um, I'd say more like every day, especially weekend and summer coming up and like when you've got people around for the weekend. I know we have our weekends off um, quite often when we're not traveling around the world. So um, just really relaxed, as I said, not much preparation involved. Um, just to make for your friends coming around. Um, do you mind passing me a knife, please? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Thank you. But as I said, um, with pulled pork, it's really good too, because you've got, um, you can do this pork in the slow cooker and then it gets really nice and you can add that to them. And I guess you could use chicken, turkey, oh, yeah, absolutely. strips of beef, anything really with these. And do it with big side salad as well. Um, it's easy, it's got everything. And so obviously you, you, you just mentioned there about traveling the world. How do you manage nutrition around travel, like on planes and different time zones? Yeah, do you know, it is sometimes really challenging um, because you do go to countries with quite obscure eating habits. I know we've had a few interesting um, meals in places like Japan and, and Russia. You don't quite know what you're eating sometimes. <laughs> um, so it is a case of having to be quite prepared. Um, our nutritionist helps out with the plain food. Um, so quite often we get provided a meal. To um, take with you. Yeah. And... But then kind of when you get there, it's a bit of hope for the best sometimes, really. <laughs> um, but kind of you get into habits along the way, you know how it is, like you learn what you like and if you can bring different bits with you. Like some snacks and top up type thing. Yeah. Um, like overnight, you can do oats and stuff like that. Green porridge oats, that's always a good one. Um, depending on what you can get through customs. <laughs> but. And um, so obviously when you're playing on the seven circuits, you play six games over two days and they're kind of like two to three hours between games. Mm -hmm. So how do you fuel leading into a competition on the day of competition? Um, do you kind of, you know, stock up on in the night before on some calories and high carbs? And how do you kind of manage all of that? Yeah, so I'd say definitely night before, it's kind of get your carbs in um, and just try and store up those, that, those energy sources. Um, the morning, I'd always try and have a really good breakfast um, and then, what would that kind of consist of? So quite often I try and have I'd have kind of like wholemeal bread with a scrambled egg, smoked salmon if we're lucky, depending where it is, a bit of avocado. But as I said, sometimes you can't be too picky, so it's kind of what you can get. Porridge again, the safe option. Um, but then throughout the day, it's kind of just trying to get your calories in somehow through anything. I mean, lots of girls have smoothies. Some um, and this would be like straight off the pitch off. And you'd yeah. straight away be consuming that to try and recover quickly. Yeah, and also, like you said, it's a tight turnaround. So the quicker you can eat, then the quicker you can let it digest. Because obviously, running around on the pitch quite often in 30 degrees, it's not great to have a massively full stomach. Exactly. Yeah, you're not going to want to feel heavy or full, mm. are you? You're just going to kind of want to have the right amount. Yeah, so I think for me, I always go for quite bland food. And it, it is, I kind of go against everything I'm normally about in terms of food. So normally at home, I like experimenting with different things and I'll always cook different food, loads of flavours and all sorts. Whereas 
game day, I'll have kind of, yeah, bland pasta, a bit of bread, a wrap, um, banana and peanut butter wraps, one of my go-tos, mm -hmm. um, as is a lot of the players. girls. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I yeah, guess anything you, yeah. to get those calories in. And you want it to be, you know, quick and easy and just accessible yeah. to you straight away. So, and those are the kind of foods that are available pretty much in in every um, country kind as well. Of staple, give aren't or they? take, like a few variations. But. And so, like, let's look at like. So you finished the tournament. It's last game. So you've played six games in two days. What would kind of be your recovery strategy going forward in that week or on your return? So normally, this goes completely against probably what I meant to say, but, but um, the day after playing will be, I eat what I want, and I just kind of, again, it's like replenishing calories, so it's not completely awful, but pizza would be like a kind of cheap meal that I'd go to and just replenish my... Nice switch off. Yeah, because, um, I mean, no one's a saint, like, <laughs> um, I love it, like, it's my little treat that I can look forward to coming mm -hmm. home after every tour. Okay, so what's our next job? Do we need to fry these onions off? or? Yeah, uh, we need to give those a quick um, zhuzh, um, but I'm also going to put half a lime juice. Zhuzh, you mean on the... Yeah, on the, on the <laughs> zhuzh, you know. Okay, so I'll lose. I'm putting the honey and the lime into the cabbage. And this goes in the tacos as well, it's not on the side. It's yeah, no, everything, everything in, basically. Do you Just want me to cut this? Uh, yeah. And how do we need this cut in? So that will, again, that will just go in um, in the tacos, like in slices. So however you kind of want. It's quite a craze for a mash, smashed avocado, mm. isn't it, at the moment? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm not conforming. Let's have okay. slices. Okay, <laughs> we'll have slices. <laughs> um, so you want me to slice down the middle and then yeah. scoop round? I trust your artistic skills. <laughs> <laughs> you know me too well from rooming <laughs> with me. So now we're just going to put the prawns in with some paprika. Um, and how much paprika would you use? Just like a pinch or a spoonful? Um, a teaspoon, probably. <clears throat> I mean, the, again, this kind of thing you can just... It's not that accurate. It doesn't really matter too much. And is this normal paprika or smoked? You could use either. I'm not sure what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Is that enough? Yep. And then just... Uh, just like Jamie Oliver does. Yeah. That's like a teaspoon, yeah? <laughs> and shall I give it a mix or? Yeah, all together. And so what's on the horizon for you then in terms of, so you've actually just come back from the Commonwealth Games, haven't you? Yes. Um, and how did you do out there? <laughs> we got a bronze medal, which is brilliant. Good, good feeling, yeah. Um, it's, it's been a busy, really busy year, actually. We've got um, the World Cup coming up in July, so that's kind of our next main focus. But at the same time, you've got the World Series that carries on throughout the year. So, And obviously, the, you, com you um, debuted in the Commonwealth Games, didn't you? This is the first time that yeah. female sevens players um, have taken part. So what did that feel like to be a part of all that sort of atmosphere? And Yeah, I mean, I think kind of, well, we've both played in a, in a time where there's a lot of history being made for women's rugby. So kind of the first, being the first women in the Olympics as well a few years ago, and then the Commonwealth, it's just really exciting times to be around. And it adds to the buzz like you've Commonwealth Games is big enough as it is mm -hmm. and then the fact that you're potentially making history and a part um, of that it's amazing yeah. so obviously Rio was successful first games again and um, you guys just missed out on the bronze medal yeah but <laughs> moved forward and now we're into getting a Commonwealth bronze medal so future looks good and in a positive place leading into the World Cup and then obviously further down the field you've got Tokyo yeah in 2020 sure. yeah I think we definitely I mean we started this year as a squad that hadn't been together at all so I think a lot of nations had kind of stayed stayed as the same squad for a few years so we knew we had a lot of catching up to do essentially mm -hmm. um, but the fact that one of our aims was to medal at the Commonwealth and we did so it, it's great to tick one of those things off and obviously the next stage is then to medal at, at a World Cup um, but there's some really good sides out there mm -hmm. and everyone's just up in their game I think even from um, Rio to now, like there's huge steps to be made forward, and I know that it's just going to continue to Tokyo. So you can never, you can never rest. You just got to keep yeah, getting better, exactly. faster. Exactly. Yeah. You know that other people are getting better, so you're always keeping on your toes. Yeah. And obviously, nutrition plays a massive part to that. So, what's our next steps now? I'm assuming we're going to do something with this. Yeah. Well, we can probably 
we've got all the elements down in it. It's just heating the um, wraps and heating the prawns. Because the prawns are already cooked, I might need to put a little bit more oil in, actually. Um, okay. You will literally just have to warm them through because you don't want to make them tough. You could use raw prawns, but... Um, so it's a really easy way to marinate yeah. prawns or chicken or... Again, you could do it overnight and do like a more liquidy marinade. Or I mean, it is really simple, but also really nutritious at the same mm -hmm. time. So easy, quick fix. Get and again, serve with a massive salad and like just get the vegetables in. And you could well. do this in greater quantities as mm -hmm. well. Like you said, when you've got friends coming around or your teammates, and yeah. we all know they like to eat. <laughs> we, so. need a, we need a few. I actually test, um, tested for the first time this recipe on, on two like big guys and it just got them on list. I don't think I had any. So. Oh. <laughs> I bet they wanted the bigger size wraps yeah. as well. <laughs> um, so yeah, so these are really simply, we can, if we, we can keep that pump for the prawns. Okay. Um, we'll use a, is this one on? Do you want me to put this on for the um, prawns or are you can do the wraps first? We, do you want to spread it out? Or? Things we spoke about in terms of nutrition, there's so many different concepts out there and yeah. I think it's quite difficult for people to know exactly what to do and what not to do. Like, do you have a couple of like tips that you could give anybody who's you know, competing on a, a weekly basis or training full time? I think it, so much of it is about knowing what's good for you and ultimately your body will tell you what it wants. If you're fatigued, you probably need more energy from some source and it's finding those ways of, of finding what works for you. But also for me, I think not just in sport, but generally, it's finding a way to enjoy food. Um, I think mm -hmm. there's so much, there's so much going on. There's so many campaigns with like all sorts now, and so much is trying to deprive people of food or like deprive like of things that they like. But actually, no, it's just flipping on its head and finding a way to enjoy different foods and actually enjoying eating to make your body the healthiest mm -hmm. it can be. Yeah, um, I think that's a really key message. But actually enjoying the process of it yeah. and what you're actually thinking about it. Because some people think that cooking a meal from scratch is really difficult, yeah. which we've shown today that it's very simple. We've probably it's made it look quite difficult. <laughs> <laughs> very simple, very um, easy enough and really nutritious. So I think that's a really good um, sort of you know, statement to make out there. About, yeah, you know, there's, there's going to be foods you hate and no one's making you eat those. Like I think that's the thing. I think some people kind of misinterpret that forcing to eat things you don't like and don't enjoy mm. but no it's just flipping on its head and finding a way to enjoy different foods and uh, probably a question that that we get is you know around injuries and illnesses and and does your nutrition as I know you've recently been injured haven't you mm -hmm. does your nutrition change around you know if, if you're not training as much as you were do you change how you eat or do you need to get some more in because you've got an injury to repair and to recover and um, yeah, I think ultimately it stays fairly similar because um, we're still going to be training a hell of a lot and obviously your body needs to recover, so it needs to make sure that it's getting what it, everything it needs. Mm -hmm. We can probably start this on. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But then there's a few little things, depending on your in injury, that can really help, um, help along the way. So yeah, making sure you've got all your vitamins and minerals coming in, you've got your protein sources because obviously your body is recovering and repairing itself. Um, like little supplements that you probably wouldn't normally have could be kind of like extra collagen and if you have ligament or tendon kind of stuff. Here's me talking as if I know all this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> this is what I've been given in, in the past. <laughs> yeah. But, um, Should I put these pawns in? Yeah, and they're li literally it. just to kind of heat them up. Yeah, just make sure they're heated through and again, not cooked so we don't want too this long. too hot, do we? Because it will then just toughen them up. Okay, so I think these are done now. Perfect. Get ready to dish up. So how do we attack this? What's the... <laughs> so I am a sucker for presentation. Okay. I think food should look good. Then it will taste good, right? Okay, <laughs> so, fair. Um, let's try and make this look pretty. So we literally take... We can probably take one each and pop it on the plate. Some more. The trick is... Um, yeah, hopefully full. So we're going to try and get a line of them. Okay. No pressure. Um, so what I normally do is I put a little bit of the cabbage in, Four cabbage concoction. Um, you don't want to overfill them too much because, I mean, they're quite challenging to eat as it is. So and in here we've got the onions that I cut and fried. Mm -hmm. um, 
what else do we have? Honey. Yeah. And, and um, lime juice. And, and a little bit of salt. Um, again, you, like that's where you can have the onions raw, but um, and then I normally go for a little bit of avocado. So get a couple of bits. Or however many you want. Not smashed avocado. Not smashed. Like. <laughs> You just put this next to it. Yeah, and then grab a few. We'll do the sauce right at the end when we've got them all. Depends how many we're making. It's hard to oh, like pour in. Then go from there. Um, and then it's just continuing that process and trying to whack them together so they stand up. Hey, Amy, these look absolutely delicious. I think we Thank should you. tuck into them. Be careful, they're going to be messy. Okay. Lean forward. Lean forward, head over the plate. <laughs> Hope for the best. Oh, I lost there it. Goes one. <laughs> An yeah, one downside to tacos, but it's worth it. Mm. Mm. <laughs> really good. That smoked paprika is really, really nice. Mm, tasty, isn't it? Really lovely. Um, yeah. Well, thank you for being on the episode of the Performance Kitchen, and thank you everybody for viewing today. Sorry, you were just about to say something.